Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's case is very disturbing. Today we're going to be talking about the case of Albert Fish. Fewer discretion is advised. Today we're going to be talking about a little bit of everything besides BDSM. Now, if you do not want to watch the case anymore, trigger warning. Viewer discretion is advised. So today's case is on Hamilton Howard Fish, the Gray Man. So, he was born in Washington, D.C. on May 19th of 1970 to parents Ellen and Randall Fish. Now, it's safe to say the Fish family had mental issues. That is very important in today's case. Hamilton Howard is also known as, a.k.a. Albert Fish. So, Ellen and Randall Fish had a big age gap. They were 32 and 75 around the time their youngest son was born. And it's no surprise that Randall Fish died at the age of 80 of a massive heart attack when Albert was 5. Now around that time, Albert's mother had to place him in an orphanage called the St. Paul's Orphanage in Washington, D.C. Now, during this time, when he was in the orphanage, he was mentally and physically abused by the students and the staff. He was beaten, and he realized he liked being beaten. It gave him a sexual gratification. Yes, it turned him on. Now, if you don't know what Saint-O-Maskinism is, it's basically when you're turned on by sexual beatings of any kind. So, yes. <sighs> by, nine, by 1880, Fish's mother was actually able to obtain a job and was able to take him out of the orphanage. And by... 1882, at the age of 12, he was released back into the care of his mother. Now, a few years later, Fish decided to pack a bag and move to New York City, where he became a male prostitute around the age of 20. And around this time, his mother actually arranged a marriage to Anna Marie to a woman named Anna Marie. So yes, they actually did get married and they had six children and they were together for nine years. Around this time, around his marriage, Fish essayed underage boys under the age of six. Now, in so Fish's wife Anne left him around January of 1972, a man named John. Now, also around this time is where Fish would start inflicting pain on himself. He would stick needles in his, underneath his skin. He would... Nails underneath his skin and then needles in his abdomen and his growing in his penis like that's where he would stick them and his buttocks he also would take toilet paper and his kid one time found a carrot and a hot dog in his drawer that were decaying and he told them he shoves it up their at his ass he shoves it up his ass so then he started shoving shit up his ass and setting it on fire he started set setting it on fire people how insane do you have to be also he started writing women in the classifieds now if you don't remember what the classified section of the newspaper was is where women would basically say i'm single or i need a job or i need this basically 
since this is the 20s this was the 20s he wrote women and he wrote one particular woman this part is truly disgusting i do apologize you're you're more than able to leave if you don't want to hear this part of the story he basically is saying he would like to eat her feces as it was coming out of her with peanut butter he would also drink his own urine and eat his own feces he he liked doing that he also liked to uh when he would stay at someone's house he would legit like to shit on the floor in the bed and he would also leave toilet paper scraps and scraps everywhere of what he lit stuck up his asshole and lit it it, it turned him on it it's fucking disgusting it turned him on like ew Ugh. so yeah on July 11th, 1942, Albert Fish stumbled upon Beatrice Kills, a six-year-old girl. Now, she was playing alone on her family farm in Staten Island. You know, this was the 20s. You know, you didn't have to worry about your kids getting kidnapped or anything like that. So, Fish approached her and said, Hey, I need help. I'll pay you if you help me look for a rutabagel. A rutabagel is, um... A certain vegetable. I'm not really, I don't know how to describe it, but it's a certain vegetable. And so, before she left, her mother noticed, like, um, yeah, no, this guy's giving me very weird vibes. So, Beatrice's mother, doing the smart thing, and telling the older gentleman to leave. Now, the older gentleman, Albert, did leave, but he came back several hours later to sleep trying to sleep in the farm house but her father like heard a noise and asked him to leave the property but the reason that he had these sexual urges for children like to essay them and stuff like that was because God was telling him to do it and John the Apostle was talking to him you know he had very weird hallucinations about that stuff he, he, again, was very mentally ill. I said that in the beginning of this story. Now, yes, he was mentally ill at this time. He was around 54. So, yeah, very, very mentally ill. So, he didn't get a chance to do anything to Beatrice, but sadly, three days later, he did take the life of Francis McDonald. Now, Frances McDonald was a 10-year-old little girl. So, she was, she was reported missing by the police when she didn't return home after playing catch with some friends. Now, they did find her body hanged to a tree with his suspenders wrapped around her neck. Yes, and the autopsy did show that she had lacerations on her and all that other stuff. So, yeah, the reason, it took a while for them to find out who did it, but they finally did after they discovered a death of another girl that he killed, and that little girl's name is Grace Bud. Now, we're going to talk about Grace Bud, but trigger warning, this part is very disturbing. I will be showing a little bit of what he said in the letter. So the thing about Albert Fish is was, was he liked to write the victim's parents' letters describing the most gruesome things he did. Now, 10-year-old, now, he went by Frank Howard. One day he was going through the classifieds. He was trying, he went upon Edward Budd, the 18-year-old 18 brother of Grace Budd. He was looking at the classifieds. Now, like I said, this is how people were trying to find work. So, he stumbled across Edward because he was looking for a job. And he was 18 at the time. He wanted to take control of Edward, but he didn't get the chance to do so. Because he felt like Edward would have had control over him, and he didn't like that. He wanted to be in control of the situation. Now, he... Frank Howard came to the home. He answered the telegram a few days late. He came a few days later. 
He came to the house. He was like, okay, I have a job for you. This is the job description, and I'll come back tomorrow. But that was a lie. He didn't even have a job for Edward at all. He want, Like I just said, he wanted to take Edward and have control over him. But, you know. So, Grace, the next day, Grace decided to sit on Albert's lap. You know, and he's like, hey, my, my niece is having a birthday party down the street. You want to come with me? And, you know, this being the 20s and all, like I said, parents trusted him. And they said, okay, just bring her back whenever. So, this was the last time her family ever saw Grace alive again. Because he took Grace to an abandoned house down the street. He got naked. Because he didn't want to get her blood all over him. So he... She was like, I'm going to leave. She tried to leave and no. She, he strangled her to death. And he mutilated her body. And it took nine days for him to eat her. How sweet and juicy her little ass was. I'm going to basically read what the bottom of the letter said. It took nine days to eat her entire body. I did not fuck her, though. I could had. I wish she died a virgin. Basically. So, yeah. It took years to find out what happened to Grace. And the police did not stop. But Frank Howard did send this letter. And so, they noticed the letter had, the, had N-Y-P-C-B-A on it. So, they're trying to trace it. They're like, hey, do you know do you know anything about this? They finally found the man who did it. It was Albert Fish. Now they captured him, brought him in for questioning. He basically said, Yes, I did eat her, stuff like that. So Albert Fish was sentenced to death. Hold on. Albert Fish was sentenced to, electric, to the electric chair on January 6, 1936. So yeah, guys. I Hi, guys. I want to apologize. I forgot to include one of Albert Fish's victims on video. So I'm just going to go back and post this. I do apologize for being out of focus. I am so sorry, guys. I... I really don't know how to use the camera yet. I don't have the flip up on my camera, so I can't tell if I'm in focus or not. But please be patient with me. Please, guys. And I love for you guys for watching me, even though I'm out of focus. I am so, so sorry. So, I forgot one of Albert Fish's victims. He was a two-year-old little boy by the name of Billy Griffin. His name is G-A-N-F-F-Y. Now, if you could tell me how to pronounce it, that'd be great. Leave me a comment down below. And, um, yeah. So, one day in our apartment complex, Billy Grinson was playing with two older kids, one named Billy Benson and his 12-year-old brother. They're just playing outside the apartment complex, you know, minding their business. And then a man approaches them. This was in February this was on February the 11th of 1927. So he approached him, I guess, and the Billy Benson went to go inside because he was trying to find his apartment complex. Later, he was found on the roof. And so he was asked, hey, where did Billy Griffin go? Griffin, where, where'd he go? He's like, oh, the boogeyman got him. So that's how Albert Fish got the name, the boogeyman. And so... They never found Billy's body. They just never found it. So, yeah, guys. That's all the information I could find on him. And, yeah. So, thank you for being patient with me. I love you. And have a blessed day. Guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. I love you. God loves you. And, hi. My name is Julie. Where I talk about all things true crime. 
and anything else you like to hear. And if you're an oldie but a goodie, how's it going today? And if y'all guys noticed, I did my intro last today. What do y'all guys think? Leave me a comment down below. Alright guys, I love you. Have a good night. Bye.